Hey everybody, what's up? Mike here. Yeah, so it's been a couple of weeks since I uh, did my reaction to Liliac. I now know that the band's name is pronounced Liliac and not Lilac. Jeez, what was I thinking? Um, Y'all made that abundantly clear in the comments. Like, I got so many comments. One after the other from the Liliac fan base, which I now know you all are called Fangs. So, and it is apparently the name is Romanian for bat. So, um, probably a little bit of a Dracula reference, if I had to guess. Uh, but yeah, so I figured I, you know, I, uh, I got a haircut and a shave. I'm looking cute. I'm kind of in the mood to do another reaction video. I got my vaccines, like, last week. I'm still feeling kind of, uh, about that. My system's still adjusting. But, uh, I figured, yeah, I'm in the mood to react. I know a lot of you wanted me to do the extended version of Not Afraid. I think I'm going to do that next. But as soon as I saw that Liliac were covering Heaven and Hell by Black Sabbath, I had to check it out. Um, I'm intimately familiar with this tune because I actually learned how to play it on the guitar. Uh... Most of you who are new to this channel, especially those of you who are fangs, will not know that I play lap steel. And basically what lap steel is, is you take a guitar, like one of those behind me, and you put it on your lap, you raise the action up real high with the strings, and you play it with a slide or a steel bar. Uh, I play a pretty unique style in that I play with two slides. Ooh. On one hand. I'm the only one in the world doing this. I learned this from my mentor, Brian Cober. He was a legend in the Canadian blues scene. He taught me his technique. He invented this whole crazy system. Amazing, beautiful, wonderful system of just really what well, he invented a new instrument and reinvented lap steel as we know it. Um, but here's the interesting thing. So the point is I learned this tune uh, for lap steel uh, my teacher at the time, we down-tuned my lap steel to open E-flat, because the original is an E-flat and not E. Those of you who are guitar players will know this. And I learned this tune, so I'm very familiar with the original. Um, I love it. It's a simple tune, but it's a great tune. And Dio's vocals on the original make the tune for me. And I know Melody is a big Dio fan. You all made that very clear to me. And um, I'm excited to see what she does with this. And what the band does with this. So, yeah, let's go. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button below. Down there, down there. It's somewhere down there. I always forget where it is. Ring the bell to get notified. Uh, make sure you select all choo-choo, as I call it. Uh, so, yeah, you know, you know when I post a new video... Um, leave a comment, give the video a like. All these things help the algorithm and help my channel get seen. So, without further ado, here's Liliac covering Heaven and Hell by the immortal Black Sabbath. Let's go. Ooh, interesting. Okay, right off the bat, um, very, a little, a little bit different from the original. It's got the simplicity, um, it's a little bit of a heavier tone. The interesting thing about older songs and older records is that there's actually a lot less distortion on the guitars, even in older metal like Black Sabbath. In, this, in, the, in their 70s uh, with Ozzy and, and in the 80s with Dio than you might expect. It's always interesting to hear new bands cover an older tune because usually they put on more distortion on the guitars than there is in the original, which is, which is really, it's really interesting. If you listen to Sabbath or you listen 
to Van Halen or Led Zeppelin, um, any of those bands, even Judas Priest, um, and early Iron Maiden, there is a lot less distortion on the guitars than you might think. And it's actually the combination of the two guitarists together in the band which creates the heaviness. Um, what's really interesting, and of course, if you have one guitar player in the band like Liliac has, and I forget the brother's name, you'll all remind me. Um, but um, what's interesting is that because there's only one guitar here, he's kind of kind of have to make up for that two guitar attack. So he kind of makes up for it by putting a little bit more gain. So it's a little bit heavier. What's really interesting to me though, is that the melody of the riff there, he's also doing this in an overdub where you can hear, I think on this side where he's doing this uh, high up and he's doing unison bends. And it's this really raunchy sound, it's really cool. And the synths that the keyboard player is playing, that's a little bit different too. I know in the live version actually, when Black Sabbath used to do this live in the 80s, I've heard some live recordings where um, there were some synths and some string pads like you're hearing here. So maybe Liliac took a little bit, ins little bit of inspiration from the live recordings from the 80s with Dio and the band. Um, just go back a little bit and let's, uh, let's give this a shot. Also, the hi-hat sound on the drums is very different from the original. Not what I was expecting, but it's distinct and it's different. And when you do a cover, you should make it your own. The groove's really good. And I love how the bass player is keeping the... It's simple, just like on the original recording. This seems to be a, a, faithful, co a faithful cover, but they're at the same time making it their own. So, let's continue. I like the octaves there on the lead guitar. Nice slow gallop. Interesting. I seem to remember on the original that the doo 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 doo, -doo that riff only happens once and they've done it twice. I could be misremembering. Um, the interesting thing about Melody's vocals, obviously, as I found out, she's a big Dio fan and I picked up on that right away with her voice. I can hear his influence. On this, she's trying to get that in his voice and it's interesting. I hear a little bit of a difference here between her voice and Dio's, where Dio's voice has that right in it. I can't, I don't know what the proper musical term is, but that kind of timber in her voice. But I find Dio's is a little bit more bright and open in sound. And I find Melody's voice is a little bit more closed and a little bit darker. Not saying that that's wrong or anything. It's just a little bit of a tonal difference between the two in terms of how she's sort of interpreting Dio's vocal part. Um, it, it, it's it, it's interesting. It might be kind of the vocal clip one of like what I was saying about the guitars, where when newer bands cover an older tune, they hear way more distortion than there actually is, and maybe and they tend to maybe overemphasize it, the parts that they like, the heaviness, and maybe Melody hears a similar thing in Dio's vocals where she's hearing a heaviness, and maybe she's remembering that there's more of that heaviness or that darkness or that close sound there than there actually is on the recording, which is really cool, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm just, I'm just notice, noticing differences between this and the original because it's always kind of fun to compare um, and how people reinterpret 
so far, she's doing a great job singing. I can hear a little bit of a chorus or, re or re a reverb effect on her voice. Um, and she is singing the hell out of this. So let's keep going. Oh, yeah, that's right. The space bar doesn't work anymore. I forget what button it was on my keyboard. YouTube, why are you changing this? Honestly. I now know that the band is sponsored by Sawtooth Guitars. that fill on the drums. Nice. Okay, okay, lot, 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 lots, lots going on here. Um, so what I'm hearing in Melody's voice is, I'm just gonna bring it back a little bit. She's got a little bit more distortion and grit on it than Dio did. Um, this is her own interpretation. I kind of remember Dio's voice having the same amount of passion and power, and she's just got this... Her phrasing, she's really got his phrasing down um, really well, especially with the vibrato. But she's sort of interpreting his voice with a little bit more distortion and a little bit more grit, and it's a little bit of a... Uh, I would say a rougher interpretation of Dio's vocals, but still really cool. Um... It's really well done. They're doing a very faithful cover here. I noted that the drummer actually uh, kept one of Bill Ward's original drum fills that's on the original tune. That's a great drum fill. Um, and there's a little bit of modern metal things going on here. Like you can hear with like the rhythm section between the rhythm guitar and the bass and the drums that when they do some of those fills, they're adding a little bit more complexity to it uh, than what's on the original. They're making it their own. And this is really, 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 really well done. Um, it grooves. It really grooves. And it's a really well, well done cover so far. Um, I'm very impressed. I actually think this is probably my favorite Black Sabbath song. I know a lot of people like the Ozzy era in the original era, and so do I. But I think when I heard this tune with Dio on it, it did something for me. This and um, Neon Knights off the same record are just incredible tunes. So uh, I want to continue on with this. Um, I'll point out some cool things. I've just kind of taken it all in. But I'll, I'll point out some cool things as we go. I just backed it up a little bit. And uh, let's keep going. <laughs> There's a little bit more pinch harmonics from the lead guitar than on the original, that's cool. He's really got his vibrato down with the vocals. backing vocals in and interestingly enough 
There's that nice drum fill from the original that Bill Ward did. Interestingly enough, here's an interesting difference between this and the original. So here in this little, I guess you call it a bridge, um, they kept the backing vocals, but the cool thing is they actually have the rhythm guitar go clean, and on the original, it's distorted. So again, different way of interpreting things. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, I think when you do a cover and when you react to a cover, it's impossible not to compare it to the original. And I'm not saying that like the original's better or this is better. They're both different and they're both awesome in their own ways. And I love this and I love the original. Um, this is a really, 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 really damn, it's a damn good cover. It really is. Um, let's continue on. Love that drum fill. Oh, she got that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really nice. Okay, the little guitar look there is a little bit more complex than the original, but still cool. They're, they're really laying down that gallop. So nice. Oh. Okay, we have to talk about the guitar solo gear. This is cool. Um, I forget the brother's name on the guitar. You're welcome to put that in the comments to remind me. What's really interesting here to me is he's made this guitar solo his own. So I'm just gonna go back. So that he's keeping the space. Because there's a lot of space in the original guitar solo. But what's really interesting to me here is that he's taking Tony Iommi's riffs. And he's... He's beefing them up. He's making them a little bit more complicated. He's making them his own. But what what's interesting to me is I can sort of hear how he's sort of... Paying tribute to the original guitar solo. But he's making... Ty Iomi's licks a little bit more complex and he's I guess he's trying to one-up Tony <laughs> uh, I don't know if you can do that like I love the original soul of this but it's really cool to hear him sort of take Tony's original solo and update it for the 21st century with all the tapping and stuff I'll, 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 I'll show you what I'm talking about Like right there, there was a, in the original, there's a really simple pentatonic lick. And he takes that as a launching point and then makes it a little bit more complex with like the faster legato type stuff. Um, here. 
use that as a zone. Keep him with the space, which is important. That's in the original. Ha! That's not. So what's really neat there is that, again, on the original recording, there's this really simple descending minor pentatonic lift, and, lick, and uh, he's just going for it with the tapping and going like, yeah, I think, I think we can make this more complex and more interesting harmonically. And it certainly is. Like, I love the original soul, but this is really cool. Um, so, so far he's doing a bunch of tapping stuff. He's keeping motion of the minor, pen minor pentatonic scale, but then he brings in this. A little bit of natural minor. I love that. Do, 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 do. A little bit of a Bach influence there. Check this out. Right there. That's so cool. Now he's just holding the notes. Nice little descending run there at the end. Very well done. Drummer's building up. You hear the bass joining. Oh, interesting. That's cool. That's cool. So, that's a little bit of a different interpretation. Um, on the original recording of this, when they get to this faster upbeat section, uh, Black Sabbath goes into the kind of beat, but it's on the snare. What she does on the drums is she holds the snare, but she does a, a snare build, and then she goes into a little bit of a different groove, same tempo, same kind of feel, but she does it with the hi-hat and the snare. So she's completely reinterpreted the drum part for um, this like second half of the tune. Really interesting to see her interpretation of this on the drums. Um, it's really nice to see that, you know, like, at some, like, throughout this video, the band's been playing this very faithfully. But there's places where, like, in the guitar solo and here on the drums where they're going off the script and making it, th and making it their own. Because I think when you cover a tune, you have to do that. You can't just be a carbon copy of the original. And it's really cool to see how they've reinterpreted certain sections and just kind of breathe new life into the tune. I think that's pretty awesome, to be honest. Um, let's keep going. Another difference is on the original, on the original, the, the bass does a do dee do dee do dee do dee do really high up, and the bass player here is choosing to keep that same rhythmic pattern but play it lower down. Other interesting difference to note. Let's keep going. Yeah, now they completely. Nice little bass lick. Nice little bass lick there. 
I almost find this to be more intense than the original for the second half. Oh, nice scream! Melody, wow! Whoa! 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 What a scream! She just ascending up that minor scale and just hits. Oh my God! Like I said, her range, and and I know a lot of, and I saw the comments some people made online, on here and on Facebook, and and people misunderstood me because people thought I was saying that she was a better singer than Flory Anson. And I did not say that. I said that in the range department, i.e. your actual vocal range, how high and low you can go, Melanie can give Flory Anson a run for her money. In other words, she can compete with Floor. Not saying that she's better or Floor is better than her, but like she can hold her own in the range department and this is this is proof. Um that that's incredible. The, the thing I'm noting here in the second half is this is a little bit more intense than the original. I find that um, the original, the way Bill Ward plays the groove on the drums, which is mostly on the snare, which I think might be a little bit of a contemporary influence of his from Ian Pace from Deep Purple. It like Bill Ward's original drum part reminds me of the groove in Highway Star. By Deep Purple, where that do -do 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 rhythm is done mostly on the snare and the bass drum, um, but here your the drummer is doing it on the hi hat and the ride cymbal, the bell of the ride, and the interesting thing about that is that when you do that, um, the s snares tend to be very loud, and they're one of the loudest parts of a drum kit. So if you're doing the groove on the snare, that sound tends to dominate. And I find that you don't notice the other parts of the kit, like the bass drum as much. You can still hear the bass drum, but it's it's not as present. When you play something simpler like this, and you just have two and four on the snare, like the drummer here is doing, and you've got the groove being taken over by the hi-hat or the ride, it allows the ride and the bass drum to shine through a little bit more. And you notice a little bit more detail. And I think it just, it makes it more intense to my ears. It's a little bit more driving to me um, than the original. And really, once you have that kind of space, it allows the rest of the band to come through. I really hear the emphasis of the chug on the guitar here in this section. And like I was saying, it's a little bit more intense. Melody's got more distortion in our vocals than Dio does. It's just a little bit heavier. And it's, it's, it's a really cool interpretation of such a classic and wonderful tune. And just the scream at the end is just, oh my goodness. Like, just talk about making it her own. Just, just watch. I, I almost wanted her to get the octave right above it, but I guess she can't. That's okay. Are they going to do the acoustic part at the end? On electric. The flutes. Oh, cool. I'm so glad they did this. Oh, she can play flute. That's so cool. You can hear the two guitar parts. On the original, this is done with acoustic guitar. All of it. But that's...
that's so cool to have this like like most people when they cover this tune they don't do the end section or at least some of the covers that i've heard don't do the end section and it's one of my favorite parts of the tune and it's really cool to hear it reinterpreted on clean electric guitar and with flute because on the black side of the original this is all done tony iomi does all these parts on the acoustic guitar i think it's like there's like three or four overdubs on there for it it's really cool but it's really to hear it's really cool to hear the flute take up the melody by melody this is this is uh this is awesome this is a really unique and just awesome awesome cover um the other thing i wanted to note was that um because Dio is in tenor range, um, and Melody is a soprano, I think, um, Dio's upper range, because he's singing for a guy, this is, or something with a tenor range, I should say, for something with a tenor range, this is up there, but with Melody, because she has a soprano, what she's singing for most of the tune is probably in her lower to mid-range, um, and that's really 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 it's really cool just a really awesome cover um this band really continues to impress me i am really excited to check out the rest of their work i think i'm going to be doing not afraid the extended version next definitely um i have to check out their cover of holy diver at some point because i mean if this is how melody does dio she just nailed the tonal and the timber character of his voice a little bit more grip but just you can tell she loves him you can hear that passion in her voice that same passion that's in dio's and she really loves what she does and it, they all do and it really comes across in the music so liliac i love you all keep doing what you're doing you all are awesome um, I think that's it for today. So again, if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button below, uh, leave a uh, comment, give it a like, and uh, ring the bell to get notified when I post a new video. Make sure you hit all so that you get uh, all the notifications for when I post something new. I'll be back in a week or two with another reaction. Um, thank you for all for hanging with me today. This was a real treat. I will see you next time. Bye. Amazing. What else can I say? Amazing.